Okay, I know what you're thinking. Confidence hacks, really? Look, the, the word hacks has been so overused lately that it's practically meaningless. And the problem is that people think that hacks are things that are gonna give them instant results without them having to do any work at all. These confidence hacks are different because they do require some effort on your part, but each one is a highly targeted action that you can take to get an almost immediate boost to your mood and your self-esteem. Without any further ado, here are seven ways you can legitimately increase your confidence when you need it most. Real quick, I wanna give a big thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring this video and for supporting the channel. Number one, get out of your head and into your body. So one of the biggest enemies of confidence on a daily basis is your own mind. Yes, your own mind. So some people speculate that the human mind has up to 70,000 thoughts per day. And because humans have evolved to be on constant alert for danger and threats to their survival, many of those thoughts are negative. The constant what if. What if I'm not good enough? What if I fail? Sometimes we get so caught up in our negative thoughts that we go down a rabbit hole. And if you've ever been stuck in a negative headspace, you know that trying to think your way out of that is nearly impossible. And that's why the quickest way to actually change your mood and your confidence is actually by changing your physiology, by moving your body. Not only does exercise distract you from your negative thoughts, but it's actually been proven to physiologically increase your sense of well-being by providing feel-good endorphins that help re reduce anxiety and boost your confidence. Even if you can't exercise, deliberately adjusting your posture can have an almost immediate impact on your mood. According to Harvard professor Amy Cuddy, just doing two minutes of these simple power poses, like standing with your hands on your hips, is enough to decrease cortisol, a stress hormone, and an increase testosterone. And the combination of that can make you feel more relaxed and more confident. Number two, harness the power of scent. Now scent has a very powerful effect on us. Have you ever noticed how a single smell can transport you back to a very specific memory in a way that no other scents really can? It shouldn't be a surprise that smelling better can increase our sense of feeling more put together and well-groomed, but a 2009 study actually showed that wearing fragrances can increase how confident we appear to other people. During the double-blind study, women were asked to watch videotapes of men who were either wearing cologne or not wearing cologne, and surprisingly, the women were more attracted to the men who were wearing cologne, even though they couldn't smell them. So in a nutshell, when you smell good, you feel more confident, so you act more confident, and people notice. And that's why wearing cologne can often be that X factor in our grooming routine that can take us from having a ho-hum day to feeling like we're on top of the world. I haven't worn a lot of cologne in the past and so I'm just starting to kind of dip my toe into the world of fragrance. And about a year and a half ago, I discovered a company called Scentbird, which is essentially a, a subscription service for fragrances. And there's a lot of things that are great about this for people who either don't wear a, a lot of cologne regularly or are just kind of starting out with fragrance. First, the fragrances come in a small spray size, so you're not stuck with a big bottle of something that you absolutely hate. And that kind of allows you to date different fragrances um, without having to commit to one so soon. Secondly, the experience of shopping for a fragrance with Scentbird is much more comfortable, especially if you're like me and you, you don't like the sort of department store perfume counter atmosphere with the bright lights and the cacophony of smells. I mean, sometimes it's really hard to actually know what you're smelling when you're there. It's totally overwhelming. So Scentbird partners with designer brands. So everything from like Tom Ford to Gucci to Prada to Guerlain. Um, and so their selection is pretty broad and they actually have something like 450 different fragrances that you can choose from on the website. For $14.95 a month, they don't just send you a tiny sample, they actually send you a full uh, rollerball size uh, that lasts 30 days and would normally probably cost you twice what this is for that same size. In the past, I was almost afraid to wear cologne because I was worried about maybe putting on too much. But as I've gotten more experience with it, I have a better sense of how much to use. And it's nice because it really is that kind of final little zhuzh to your grooming routine. And you get that sort of crisp feeling of confidence that you get when you kind of walk out of the barber with a nice, clean, fresh haircut. If you're interested in checking out Scentbird, they've given us an offer code that you can use. Just enter offer code TDM25 and you can actually get 25% off your first cologne or perfume. So I'll go ahead and leave that code in the video description as well. Number three, do a small act of kindness for someone else. So another great way to boost your confidence is to just stop thinking about yourself and your own problems for just a sec and focus on someone else for a change. We get so caught up in our own drama and baggage that sometimes we forget a very simple truth. 
we have the ability to make other people happy. You'd be surprised, but knowing that you've actually brightened someone's day can often sort of neutralize all the petty concerns that you've had about your, your own day. And, and guess what? Helping other people actually has a physiological effect that could boost your mood as well. In the book, The Healing Power of Doing Good, Alan Lux and Peggy Payne talk about how helping others can actually trigger what they call a helper's high. Similar to the runner's high that athletes experience, helping other people can trigger a release of endorphins. And then after that initial rush, you experience a, a longer period of calm and emotional well-being. Go out and do something nice for a stranger. I mean, you could go so far as volunteering at a local shelter for half a day. And I gotta say that you know nothing puts your petty concerns in perspective, like being around a bunch of people who don't have regular access to like a warm meal or a warm bed. Um, but it could also be as simple as just paying for a stranger's coffee in line at Starbucks. You're gonna be surprised at how good you feel afterwards. Number four, take a calculated risk. Another thing that can skyrocket your confidence almost instantaneously is stepping outside of your comfort zone. We spend so much of our lives living in such a confined sphere, you know, work, home, friends, family, and in that familiar environment, all of our self-criticisms and problems seem much bigger and much more difficult to solve. But we forget how invigorating it can be to get a different perspective, to challenge ourselves, to take a risk. And I'm not talking about doing anything physically dangerous. I mean, there's plenty of social risks it could be just as scary. Single, grow a pair and finally approach that girl you've been meaning to talk to. Ask your boss for a raise. Try a new haircut, take a class and learn a new skill. Attend a conference or plan a trip to a place where you don't know anyone else. So many of these things initially seem like risks, but then once you actually work up the courage to take the leap, a huge weight is lifted off your shoulders and you think to yourself, I was afraid to do this? The best thing is, even if you don't reach your intended target the first time, even if you fail, you still feel better about yourself because you had the cojones to put yourself out there and try. And after a while, this, this, uh, this sensation of wanting to look fear in the face and go for it really becomes addictive and because you feel this positive momentum in your life and it really gives you a lot of confidence. Number five, reconnect with play. So another thing that sometimes zaps our confidence is this constant drive to achieve more. Technology has made it so that we're always on when it comes to work and the, the rat race is like more, the, more of a grind than ever. We feel like we have to constantly push ourselves to work harder, to achieve more, but it's never quite enough. So maybe sometimes the solution isn't working harder, it's allowing ourselves to rediscover play. As Charlie Hone writes in Play It Away, sometimes the simple joy of reconnecting with play can do wonders for our confidence and our stress level. No longer are we beating ourselves up for not pushing and achieving more, we're just simply allowing ourselves to be. Rather than trying to be productive, for once, maybe you should just let yourself enjoy playing a game, doing a puzzle, shooting hoops, playing catch, being a kid again. Charlie says, play is a state where we are truly ourselves once we let go of our egos and fear of looking stupid. Ironically, allowing yourself periods of play can actually increase your productivity. So that release that comes with letting go of that stress for only a few hours perhaps can help improve your focus, improve your creativity, uh, improve your confidence and your satisfaction with work and life in general. Number six, talk to yourself. Now, whether you realize it or not, you already talk to yourself all the time. The, things that, the thing that we sometimes forget is that we have the power to decide whether that's positive or negative. Think positive self-talk is too woo-woo for you? You know who else gets motivated by talking to themselves? Navy SEALs. Oh yeah, and Olympic athletes. Even with their elite training and extreme levels of physical fitness, Navy SEALs and Olympic athletes have realized that psyching themselves up mentally and squashing negative self-talk is key for achieving peak performance. But it turns out there's a right way and a wrong way to talk to yourself. Personal development guru Gary John Bishop believes that positive affirmations don't work because we're trying to convince ourselves of something that we fundamentally don't believe. I'm a killer on the dance floor. Ladies can't resist my super sexy moves. That's a great aspiration, but when you're trying to tell yourself that you've attained something that you actually haven't, that becomes a disconnect in your mind. So rather than use positive affirmations, Bishop recommends using positive assertions. The difference is that assertions are things that you can legitimately summon on your own. And one of the big assertions that Bishop mentions is the phrase, I am willing. I am willing to put in the work to be a good dancer. And I'm willing to get out there on the dance floor and make a fool of myself to impress the ladies. Assertions work because they don't conflict with reality. You can make them true and no one can take that away from you. Number seven, create an awesome log. 
Now, a final way to boost your confidence is just to remind yourself of past successes. Now, we all have little wins, I mean, almost every day. The problem is that we forget about them. So at best, we allow ourselves a few moments to kind of like bask in the off afterglow, but then very quickly, we're on to the next stress or next challenge. It helps to sit down and try to think of all the times when you've had little wins and when things have gone well, etc. But it also helps to have a system to capture those things going forward. And that's why you should create an awesome log and use it to keep track of things like little personal wins, great compliments that you received, small victories at work, meaningful conversations you don't want to forget, things that made you proud. So you could go analog with this and simply just record this stuff in a notebook, or you could use an app like Evernote, um, or you could have a little bit of fun with it, make it a little more interactive by putting post-it notes in a mason jar, and that way you can sort of watch your awesome log grow right before your eyes. If you're having trouble thinking of past victories, ask for help. Ask your friends or ask your coworkers. You know, a lot of times they'll be able to remember positive experience that you've had that maybe you've forgotten about. By capturing those thoughts going forward, you can refer back to your awesome log whenever you need a little pick-me-up and when you need to remember that, oh yeah, that's right, I am awesome. And here are a few reasons why. All right, gentlemen, hope you enjoyed that video. Now I want to hear from you guys. What other confidence hacks have you guys used to boost your confidence? Once again, thanks to Scentbird for making this video possible. And guys, if you want to take advantage of that, that deal that I mentioned earlier, you can use that offer code TDM25 uh, to save 25% off on Scentbird. And I will leave that in the description below as well. If you like this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to see more videos like this, you can click right about here. Uh, make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified when videos come out. If you want to free copy of my ebook, 48 Hour Gentleman. You can do that by clicking right here. And if you just want to watch another Distilled Man video, you can do that by clicking right here. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.